Okay, I'm going to try to take you through my processes and make it pretty short and sweet on how I'm using Cuppa and the other tools I'm using. Charles has addressed some of this already, actually a lot of it, and I'm just going to try to combine a lot of it into one video. Um, so to start off with, um, he mentioned using um, topicalmap.ai, and so as you can see, I've got it in here, and I started using it to where I was just using the SEO portion of it, and that was nice. But when he showed me the social part of it, I thought that was super cool. So I'm going to go ahead and create one, and I'm just going to put something in here. Um, create social first map. I'm just going to put AI tools, and I'm going to keep this really short. He uses medium for a lot of things. I'm just going to take this down to few, and I know he's using Claude. I have tried it on GPT-40, but right now I'm just using it on Claude since that's kind of what he's using. Um, so this will take a minute. I'm going to pause real quick and be right back when it finishes. Okay, so that is done now, and you can see the results from it, and there are a total of 110 microtopics. So these are titles that would work really good for um, creating content, and that's actually what I bulk upload into um, Cuppa. And you can see the topic is AI applications, subtopic natural language processing tools, and then you've got your, I mean, that's for that subtopic. And one thing I'm wanting to do with this, and I'm hoping that um, the developers at Cuppa can integrate this at some point, is I want these articles here that are all these microtopics on natural language processing tools to interlink to each other, which then all link to an article strictly about natural language processing tools. It's more of a guide or longer based um, piece of content. Computer vision software, same thing. These articles link to that. Machine learning fire frameworks, these all link to each other and then all link to machine learning frameworks. And so the I consider the subtopic more of the pillar piece. Um, and obviously machine learning frameworks is not going to be an actual title. You're going to have to create a better title for that, but we've all got ways of doing that. Um, and th this is just a little bit of uh, an example. So once you export all these subtopics, and he did a video on importing those. I'm not going to deal with that, but you download it into a CSV, and then there's a format that is created. Let's see. I don't know if I've got it here or not. I don't think I do. Here's what it looks like when you, well, I can't pull it out. Well, yeah, this might be it. Let me open it up for you. Okay, so you will see this is what you end up having to format it into. It has to have language and region in here. And then it has your point of view and your tone and everything like that. And of course I do custom presets once I upload this. But you've got your target keyword is each one of these articles. So that's what that looks like. And once it's imported, then I end up going to Cuppa, which let me find that because it should have the new version. Yep, there we go. And you're going to see a different example because I'm not going to take the time to do that. So let's go to my generated content and go to projects. And here's one for the spa that I just did. And I think there's probably 100 articles here. But worst cleansing um, advice we've ever heard, avoid these skincare mistakes, ultimate aging. And so you're going to see each one of these in here. Articles created. The, the one thing I don't like, and I mentioned this to them is that on mine it creates a lot of H3s. There doesn't seem like there's this, well yeah there are a bunch and some of that's FAQ stuff but um, in some cases it's creating just so many H3s and I'm trying to eliminate some of that. Um, I'm testing some of the extra, extra content prompts in order to see if I can impact that a little bit and I think it is some but I'd like to do it more. 
So after I'm done with these articles, um, I often go and post them to um, a Google Doc because I want to optimize them more before I put them on the website, and or at least clients want that. In some cases, I'm okay with putting it on the site and then optimizing it after I publish it. But uh, improve indoor air quality fast, four simple proven steps. So this is an article here. Let me make sure it is published. I'm pretty sure it is. Yep. Oh, no, that one isn't published. Um, but after, I'll tell you, so I go and I publish it, and then I'll go in and I use a tool on page AI, which let's go pull the history of one of these so you can see an example. Or actually, we can pull one. Now, yeah, we'll go to history. It's quicker. So I'm going to pull up um, one we just did on HVAC tips for home, beller, home buyers and sellers. And as you can see, my relevance score is much higher than what the top three ranking are. And how did I go about that? So after I inserted HVAC tips for home buyers and then the URL and it audited it, um, it pulled up the results here and you can see that I've got a few more words than what the average top three is. H1's um, same, H2 is pretty close to the same, H3 is pretty close to the same. They have some H4s, I don't, and I have some images here. But my relevance score is 374.6. So what did I do with this process after I did that? I went to um, ChatGPT and I used the Ask Your PDF Research Assistant. And I asked it to, I attached this file, the Search Quality Evaluator Guidelines. And you can just search um, Google Rater Guidelines and you're going to find the PDF and you're just going to download it. But I'm going to upload it here and I'm going to ask, ask your PDF, please read the document and Establish yourself as an expert on Google Rater guidelines. Now, occasionally when I do this, I get some interesting results. Oh, looks like I got to sign in first. Okay, there we go. Um, I get some interesting results. Sometimes it will do things like, okay, I've read through it. If you want to know anything about it, let me know. Let's see. Okay, good. So I'm liking this. It's given a detailed summary rather than just saying, okay, I read it. And so I like this to kind of train itself a little bit and understand these. So I am going to um, go take... I'm going to use the same one for right now that I'm using the testing for on the on page. So that's going to go, and I'm going to go pull these three competitors for HVAC tips for home buyers, which is budgetohio.com. Let's go see if the URLs are down here. Okay, there we go. Copy this one. Okay, that's done. So now I'm going to say at WebPilot, I want it to crawl, and I put these in brackets. This is Charles, one of Charles' names also. I'm going to crawl a few of these sites. And I'm just going to grab these first three for right now. Get all those pasted in and evaluate each of the sites individually based on your expertise of the Google Raider guidelines. Okay, so that's going to crawl each one of those and evaluate it based on these main five things, probably. Sometimes it goes a little deeper, but 
I'm just, you know, you're going to play with this and get your own results. But that's going to crawl each of those sites. And so the next thing I'm going to do is after that's done is I'm going to have it crawl my site or my page and provide analysis also. So that's probably going to take a minute to finish right there because it's really just on the first one so far as on Budget Ohio. Oh, but what I was saying about um, the topical AI, I, I really would love it if um, Kappa could find a way when it's bulk creating to interlink the articles. Um, I know Charles mentioned that they have a new tool on AI interlinking, and maybe that can do some of that for us already. And this is, you know, what I'm saying doesn't even matter. But okay, first one's done. I think. Oh no, there's Brandy Wine. So we should have. Oh, there's Forbes. Okay, so it did all those. I'm not going to take the time to read through them right now because it's kind of evaluated. So now I'm going to say crawl my site and evaluate the content based on the same Google Raider guidelines. And I, I make sure that this says my site only because I want it to, um, if I refer to it as my site and some of the prompts that I create down the road here, I want that to understand that's my, my site. Okay, so that's evaluating all that. So the next prompt that I'm going to use is compare my site to the three competitor sites based on the Google Raider guideline results and provide action items that will help my site rank above the competitors for the search term and what was my search term? HVAC tips for home buyers. Okay, so that's going to do that and give you some ideas. And again, Charles covered a lot of this stuff. So um, it, you'll get some action items. Oh, did I ask for action? Yep, okay. So it's comparing it to those three. And here in a minute, I'm going to get some action items. Now, when I get those action items, I go back to on page AI, which did I delete the damn thing? Looks like I might have. Um, let's go pull it back up. So I, this has already I've actually been done some on a, a couple action items that it suggested. And I had a lot more keywords in here in red than what I do now. And on the highly related keywords, the core keywords, um, keyword variations, related keywords, and even down here in the special category, you can see a bunch of them here. Um, but, you know, one thing I've noticed is, you know, you look at this construction and maintenance. So not all these are going to be relevant, but I do like to use some, and I may go back and add more later. Um, but let's see if that is done. Okay. So here's my action items. Um, enhance eat. Optimize content for search intent. Refine keywords. Ensure the content includes variations of the keywords such as HVAC inspection tips for home buyers. Okay, I like this. Create a focused FAQ section. Did I not add FAQ? I may not have on that one. Um, add infographics. Add external links. Um, build reputation and trust. Regularly update content. So let's say 
for example, I'm going to do the regularly update content, keep that to date fresh. What I would end up doing is I go through and I identify through the red keywords that were in here initially, kind of something that they have in common. And if you want, you can click on the missing from target. You could copy them and go back to chat GPT and say, and say, based on action item number six, give me a new section that includes, and, and like I said, I try to find something in common. And one before, it was like on reviews. I, I could see reviews being used for a lot of those keywords. Another one, it was on where to buy. Um, so with this keyword being HVAC tips for home buyers. Maybe, oh, and this one I created a checklist, actually. Let's go pull that up so you can see it. This is what I added to this content to get that. There's an HVAC inspection checklist for home buyers and sellers, and I pasted all those red keywords in here. So that was kind of nice. And then I did an important questions to ask about the HVAC system during the home buying process was another one. So I put a bunch of questions in there as well. Um, so that's what I did for that one to get that score up. And this was just done a couple days ago. So we'll see how the results are. And I may go back and edit that more. But um, that will give you an indicator of how to get this up. And you can always say send to editor here and get a score. But it's it's going to be a hundred if you do these things every time. Um, I'm not worrying too much about what percentage is AI generated or anything like that at the moment. Maybe I'll go back and do that later, but um, I've had good luck already just doing it this way. So um, let me know if you have any questions on that. I'll try to do the best I can in explaining or answering them. Um, but hope that helps. Thanks.